Hello and welcome to the Trade Ideas Live Trading Room Recap for Tuesday, June the 24th. My name is Barry Enerson. I'm the moderator of our room. This is the address to get in and you can log in with your Facebook or your Twitter account. Okay guys, well another uh, pretty boring slow day. Uh, in fact, let me just see what the SPY is. Uh, let me see what the SPY is doing. In terms of volume, I'm sure it is just pretty putrid. Let's just take a look here. Yeah, I mean... Look at the look at the volume of the last three days. I mean, uh, this is this is yesterday, the day before. This is today. Ah, uh, there's an hour and a half left. We may get up to this, but I mean, you can just see that the volume is starting to really, really slide. So, you know, I have to, and I and everybody else really should too. But I have to uh, really watch myself on 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 these sorts of uh, days, uh, not to try to overtrade and and make things happen you know force the issue um you know you can you can start trading at a boredom and that can be really uh that can be problematic for sure i know i've done it in the past uh you know i don't mind sitting on my hands if it doesn't set up it doesn't set up and that's all there is to it so um what i'm going to do today i'm just going to go over um uh, I guess three quick trades. I'm still in one trade, and then maybe I'm just I'm just going to show you uh, maybe a feature that you weren't aware of uh, in Trade Ideas, and uh, try to maybe make it a little more interesting than watching these pretty boring trades. CPXX was the first one, and CP CPXX uh, that was uh, from the pre-market. Uh, we saw this. Uh, here's where it closed yesterday at 2:30. You can see all the excitement up to three dollars. Um, right here is where it opened. So, you know, it was it uh, got up to $3 right there in the pre-market, came back down. Not a bad setup, you know, in terms of coming. It, it didn't uh, fall off the face of the earth. It uh, it uh, stayed close to $3. And actually right here on the opening candle, it popped above. Now, I think the problem mainly was uh, if you look at the daily on it, um, you can see that there is no. Uh, let's take a look at the weekly. That might show a, a, a clearer picture. Uh yeah, I mean, you can see right here that we've got some definite resistance at 316 right up here. So, you know, that was going to be a tough nut to uh, to to crack. Now, there was a spike up to 352, but there's a lot of there's a fair amount of this is a weekly chart. So a fair amount of resistance in this area. So I saw that. And so let's go back to the five minute chart. And, you know, it looked like it wanted to pop above it. I thought, okay, I'm going to take this. It was news, news related. Uh, I actually think that the news was fairly good. I think it was some kind of a phase three trial, uh, which phase three, if you're not familiar with uh, how these farmers work, uh, you've got phase one, two, and three. Phase three is sort of the last uh, last uh, hurdle they have to go through. And I think there were some positive results. Uh, doesn't mean that they're, you know, they're going to market tomorrow. But nonetheless, it was reasonable news. But again, you know, that this resistance, but I took the trade right here at 316. Uh, it popped up to 326, but as it started coming down, I just exited for a, uh, for I was basically flat on this at 316. And you can see it's really done nothing since. I mean, it just fell off. Now, I will watch this one tomorrow. Uh, for the next little while, but it's got to get above 316. It's got to probably get up to the 350 level with some uh, uh, with some real oomph behind it. Otherwise, I just you know I I don't see why anybody's going to get into it. The next one was kind of another flat trade. I'm just going to show it to you. Now, this came on the Bollinger Band. This is the now you don't see it right here because um, I had to do a uh, a reconfiguration of this actually I changed some settings but originally this was on the uh, this Bollinger Band uh, RSI consecutive candle setting and the reason being is I hear the consecutive candles up uh, watched it kind of uh, uh, move up to 9470 this is a short okay what we're trying to do is is catch uh, catch situations in which a stock is sort of over in an oversold uh, sorry an overbought situation and uh, try to capture a down move so I ended up taking the short right here at 94.48. I said in the room, I'm trying like heck not to just do a scalp. Uh, here it got down to 94.35, but you can see what I was looking at. I mean, you know, this in theory had no support until down here, 93.33, so almost a dollar away. So that's why I was really trying to hold on. But, uh, you know, when it, I, but I did say that if it got back up to my... Uh, uh, where I shorted it, I would get out, and that's what I did. 94.48, I'm out flat. So again, you know, no shakes, and it's really done nothing since then. Uh, now, Nuon, 
Oh, this was an interesting one. Here's the big rumor mill at work. Uh, you can see right here, huge volume coming into it. And I guess uh, Carl Icahn, uh, or the rumor was that Carl Icahn uh, may be taking a stake into it. So I was alerted to it on this uh, volume bar and uh, took the trade right here at 1828. 1835 got me out some, and then I uh, sold the last bit for a, a, a loss, a penny loss. I was trying to get out actually at my buy, but I didn't quite make it. And it's really done nothing. And the reason why everybody is is uh, trying to figure out well, what is what is Carl going to do? Take a look at Netflix. <clears throat> Here's where the initial rumor, I mean, you can see Netflix was up, I think, at one point, $20. And by the way, they're doing for uh, a 7 to 1 reverse, or a, not a reverse split, uh, split, uh, I think, on July the 15th. So this stock will be priced around the $100 level when that happens. But right here, the, uh, I guess uh, he must have tweeted like, he, like he's wont to do, uh, basically said, I'm out of my, I'm out of Netflix now. And so look what happened. I mean, it went from six. Uh, 706 11 all the way down to 687 continued to fall so i mean this had a now it's down again it's still so you know have to understand this was up 20 over 20 dollars at one point now it's down a dollar just on uh on you know his tweet that he was getting that he got out of his position and so again the rumor mill was hard at work and people were saying maybe he'll pile into this one uh vltc we all remember Let's take a look what's happened here. Uh, VLTC is the one way back. Let's take a look at the daily. I think maybe this will uh, show you. Yeah, way back here is when he said he was taking a, a, an over 50% stake in this company. And so now people are wondering, okay, will, will, he, uh, will he up the ante in it? Uh, now the last one is PF. Uh, now this is just something that I'm doing kind of on my own. Uh, let's take a look at the five minute chart. I'll show you why. Uh, we had been alerted to this one several times. Uh, I think on, 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 on the, um, on the bounce and also on to short. And uh, so this was basically, I had this, I had this chart thumbnailed and I got a little bit interested in it when I saw this action here. You see, this is, this is uh 4701. It couldn't break through. You see the, the, um, the topping tail here. The uh, sellers took over, drove it down. So I took the uh, the trade right here at 46.91. This is a short, and I'll just see what happens. I think if it comes back to 46.91, I will get out of the trade. But I just want to see what what's uh, happening. The spy, of course, we're down 140 as as I as I'm doing this. So I mean, the spy is weak. So maybe it'll uh, you know if it can get down below the low of the day, which is 46.72, uh, it may have a, a, a more downward uh, movement in it. So. Now, I thought what I'd do, a bit of a, a break here, is I will show you something that you may not be totally aware of. Now, this is the, uh, this doesn't really matter what this is, but what I'm going to do is this. You see, you can see right here, it says biggest pullback on winners. Now, whoops, what I want to do is, come on, <laughs> just, just one second. Okay, just one second. Okay, hi, I'm back. I'm just having a, I don't know why it wasn't, uh, it just wasn't being very responsive. But when I right click here, you see that I've got uh, show strategy menu is checked. So watch what happens when I uncheck it. Okay, so that little menu went away. Now, why am I doing this? Well, let me do it again. Now I'm going to show the strategy menu and you see how now the here is what this actually is now obviously i've named it this so we we know so this would be redundant if i didn't want to do what i'm going to do next but here's a simple way in which you can kind of cycle through things if you want to uh you notice here when i uh, press the <laughs> Jeez. it's just not being very responsive but when i hit the down arrow here I can now start to change this without having to uh, reload a new window. So let's just say for fun, I wanted to uh, quickly go to the top percentage percentage gainers. There they are. Okay. If I wanted to <laughs> gainers, uh, the weekly gainers, there they are. If I want to go to the losers, top percentage losers, there they are. So you see what I'm doing. All I'm doing is as long as I have this checked, the show strategy menu checked, then I can start to cycle through. It's just not uh, now other top lists, uh, market leaders. This is okay. That's just the uh, the spy and all that. Uh, 
just not wanting to be very responsive. Um, and recent settings. These are my some of my recent settings that I can uh, that I can uh, uh, just click on and I can get uh, movers, most consecutive updates. You know, so I can see the stocks that are uh, have have had the most consecutive updates. Obviously, I can uh, see the ones that have had the most consecutive down days, and on and on and on. So that's just a really quick way of uh, cycling through in one top list window uh, various um, various things that you may want to see. Now you can do the same thing with an alert window, a little bit different. Again, it's the same principle though. Um, actually, I don't know why I've I've got show strategy menu. Hmm, interesting. I don't have it uh, checked, but anyway, you can see it is it is here. And oh, I know why. One second again. <laughs> I'm back again. Again, um, it's just not wanting. To, it's just a little bit uh, not. It's not responsive. But here's here's what you can now do in this particular window. Now, in case you didn't know. Uh, trade ideas. We do have a lot of built-in, and you know, strategies. I mean, you know, there are strategies that uh, basically what I, how I use them when I do use them, I just use them to, to try to find interesting, uh, perhaps uh, ideas. They're not, they're not uh, tested with the odds maker or anything like that. But you can see how uh, we've got bullish strategies. Come on. <laughs> um, we've got bearish strategies. I'm, all I'm doing is I'm just clicking this. Uh, and I can also look at my recent strategies. So this is a popular one. I know turbo breaks is, is something that uh, uh, people seem to like. But I, this, I'm just trying to demonstrate that you can. These are the built-in strategies that uh, Trade Ideas have. Here's turbo breaks up, and you know you you can cycle through within an alert window the same way I was doing in a top list window. And instead of having to create new ones, so it's sort of a way in which you can just cycle through. You may not have known that that was available, so I thought, I thought on a day like today, when it's kind of boring, that I would uh, just show that to you. Now, maybe, just maybe, my little uh, PF will uh, have a little bit of a rundown. So remember, I'm in short at 46.91, 46.72. Uh, I'm trying to hold off. Let, let me just take a look at the uh, daily chart, see uh, or the weekly chart. Let's see what some sort of resistance is. Yeah. I mean, in theory, 42.12, it's got some room to run if it wants to. Uh, let me look at the daily chart. And that's what I do all the time, of course. Yeah, so, yeah, 46.18. So, I mean, it doesn't have a huge amount. I mean, here's here's a base, perhaps, at 46.15. But if it can get down to 46.50 or something like that, listen, on a day like today, I'd be ecstatic because really it's just very slow. And, um, you know, but again, I try not to overtrade. Uh, I don't want to. I can. I can nickel my nickel and dime myself to death by trying to create things that really aren't there. And you know, lose a hundred bucks here, a hundred bucks there. And at the end of the day, when it when you uh, add it up, it's not what you want to see. So, anyway, that's it for today. Um, I'm praying that we'll start to get a, a little bit more action. But look, let's face it. I mean, July 4th is coming up uh, next week. Uh, I think that's next week. Uh, and so. You know, yeah, not this Friday, but the following Friday is a holiday. So, you know, let's face it, people will be taking uh, taking more time off. So you just have to, again, not force the issue. All right, uh, that's it for today. Let me uh, just bring back the uh, cover page. Here's how to get into our trading room. Uh, Logging with your Facebook, your Twitter account. Thanks very much for listening, and I hope to see you in the trading room tomorrow.